we have already learned the different basics of functions such as determining whether a relation is a function, determining if a mapping is a function, if a table is a function, if a graph is a function, determining the domain of functions given its equations, and all that. But why do we study functions? What is the purpose of functions? Basically, the purpose of functions is to represent real-life situations. Using functions more or less as in equation form and in graphs, to represent real-life situation is known as modeling. Meaning, we are going to model or represent a certain situation given some variables as functions. And the purpose of model is for us to understand what is happening in terms of its mathematical aspect and also to give some predictions of what could happen next or what could be an output given certain inputs. That's why we study functions. If you remember, we have here our graph of the cumulative COVID-19 cases from January 19, 2020 to June 29, 2020. As you can see, we have here our x-axis as the number of days and our y-axis as the number of cases. So since this is a function, as you can see by vertical line test, it will not touch the graph in to other points in the graph, meaning we can let y, which is the number of cases, as a function of x, which is the day since the 100 confirmed case. So, if we would know what this function would be, then we can predict if this number of day here would be at what specific number of cases already. If we will be able to know that relationship, then we can predict what might happen next. And knowing the different functions that we would have would help us know what are the relationship or what could be the function that relates our independent variable or the x and our output dependent variable which is our y, which is also our range and our x as our domain. If we recall, we have studied in junior high school the following functions. During grade 8, we studied linear functions, and it's defined as a function of the form f of x is equal to mx plus b, where m is not equal to 0. In some books, they have it f of x is equal to ax plus b. So, we replace a with m because we're more familiar with m as the slope of our line. So if you remember your slope-intercept form as y equals mx plus b, that is already actually the equation of a line in its function form. When we were in grade 9, we learned about quadratic functions. A quadratic function is the function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to 0. So here we learn that we have a quadratic equation and we have a graph that is a parabola. We, whether it will go like this or something like this. For the linear function, since we were not able to put it, our graph here is obviously a line which can go upward like that or downward or even horizontal. So parabola would be this one. And in grade 10, we extended as our linear and quadratic functions are actually part of the family of polynomial functions. And we define polynomial functions of degree n is a function of this form, which simply means that if our n equals 3, then our function would be f of x is equals to a sub 3x cubed plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 1x plus a sub 0, which is specifically called the cubic function. And we can have it raised to 4, raised to 5, and so on. And if we remember, 
our odd degree, our odd degree functions in terms of their graphs would look something like this. While our even degree, even degree, oops, there you go, even degree would look something like this. So we have these shapes. And it is important to remember these shapes because these shapes will help us later on identify what function can we use to model our real-life situations. But before we even go to the graphs, let's first use the functions in their equation form. This one and that one. So we shall encounter some situations wherein we might be able to use the knowledge of the equations of our functions. Let's have this example. Given a function c, uh, give a function c rather that can represent the cost of buying x meals if one meal costs 40 pesos. So, if one meal, one meal costs 40 pesos, then we know that two meals by simple addition will have 80 pesos. Three meals will have will have 120 pesos because you know we just keep on adding. One meal is 40, so two meals we just keep on adding. Four meals would be 160 pesos and so on. So how do we get with this one as our x to our y here which is our cost or we can have it as c later on maybe to be clearer let's have it as c there you go so we're just saying that this would be the function later on now we just kept on adding that's why we were able to reach these values in the range with our specific domain x as the number of meals but if you would notice one gets 40 2 gets 80 3 gets 120 and 4 gets 160 which would mean that if you will see the pattern that is actually 1 times 40 2 times 40 3 times 40 4 times 40, and so on. So that means if I have x number of meals, then I will multiply it to 40. Then the equation that I will get here, or the expression rather, would be 40 times x, which is the number of meals. Therefore, the function c that I can give is that the c of x, which is 40x. Meaning, if I input x, which is the number of meals, the function will be multiply, or the, or the relationship rather will be multiply x by 40. And we represent it this way. So therefore, our function c of x is equal to 40x.